Welcome to our presentation on the emerging Chinese mustard crop, brought to you by the University of Florida Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences. This presentation is based on the EDIS publication, Chinese Mustard Cultivation Guide for Florida, which is available online at the provided link. This crop offers an opportunity for Florida growers who want to enter Asian vegetable production or expand their existing operation. So far, the plant has been cultivated from Levy County to Palm Beach and Miami-Dade counties. Today, we will focus on how to grow these exciting new crops in our state. The scientific name for Chinese mustard is Brassica yuncia. It has a diverse set of names in Chinese, in English, and in Latin binomial nomenclature. It may still be referred to as Brassica japonica in some literature. These mustard greens should not be confused with collard greens, which belong to the species Brassica oleracea. They have a distinct flavor which some customers prefer over the taste of collards. Because the two species can be intercropped, existing collard farms can easily trial Chinese mustard. Here, we will focus on the Integrifolia cultivars, which have diverse leaf shapes and colors, and we will take a particular look at the broadleaf cultivars. Some of these cultivars recommended in Florida include Southern Giant Curled and Florida Broadleaf Mustards. Chinese mustard is a perennial herb, but growers often cultivate the plant as an annual or biennial. This helps ensure the harvest does not taste bitter. Brassica yuncia integrifolia is classified in the market mainly by leaf color and petiole size, which can be either small or big. These cultivars are adapted to their growing regions across Asia. The recommended Florida cultivars have big petioles and broad leaves and are called dai gai choi. The green to purple leaves have flat veins and an ovate shape with toothed margins. A marketable leaf is usually measured at at least 6 inches in both length and width. Each flower has four petals, creating a cross-like or cruciform shape. The petals are small and ovate, up to half an inch long, with narrow basal claws and yellow color. This plant can grow up to two to three feet tall with a wrecked stem and branches as seen on the right. The roots can reach three to four feet deep into the soil. Chinese mustard seeds are tiny, globose, and usually brown or yellow in color. Seeds may be sown a quarter to a half inch deep and spaced four to eight inches between adjacent plants in rows 12 to 16 inches apart. Chinese mustard is a cool season vegetable crop which requires three to seven days to emerge after seeding. Plant germination will stagnate if the temperature is higher than 85 degrees Fahrenheit or lower than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Therefore, the planting date of Chinese mustard in Florida will depend on growing location and latitude. Chinese mustard grows optimally in full sun conditions, but partial shade may be beneficial for the crop during warm weather to help with heat stress. When temperatures are higher than 85 degrees Fahrenheit, the subsequent low moisture can cause the mustard crop to bolt quickly and develop leaf bitterness. Chinese mustard therefore requires consistent moisture through irrigation, especially during dry periods, to prevent slow development and off flavors. It can tolerate an annual rainfall of up to 160 inches. Irrigation management advice can be found in Chapter 3 of the Vegetable Production Handbook for Florida. Chinese mustard grows optimally in well-trained fertile soils with a pH of 6.0 to 7.5, meaning that this crop can tolerate slightly acidic and alkaline soils. IFAS does not have specific NPK recommendations for Chinese mustard grown in Florida, yet despite some differences between Chinese mustard and Brassica oleracea, they belong to the same family and growers can employ the current IFAS mustard recommendations for Chinese mustard. These recommendations are 120 pounds per acre of nitrogen and 0, 100, or 120 to 150 pounds per acre of either phosphorus pentoxide or potassium oxide for high, medium, and low soil test indices with the Melic 3 soil extractant method. Consult Chapter 9 on leafy vegetable production for full charts. Remember to apply effective implementation of 4R nutrient stewardship principles right source, right rate, right place, and right time when applying nutrients to a crop to enhance nutrient efficiency and minimize nutrient loss to the environment. Chapter 2, Fertilizer Management for Vegetable Production in Florida, explains these principles in detail. 
compared to other coal crops, Chinese mustard is relatively resistant to pests. In fact, its high glucosinolate content can help control soil-borne nematodes. However, there are still several pests that might cause deleterious effects to the crop. Therefore, an integrated pest management approach is critical to successful Chinese mustard production. For overarching control of both pests and diseases, remove affected plants immediately to disrupt the pest life cycle. Floating row covers also help minimize early season infestation. Chinese mustard is host to pests including aphids in the aphis genus and white flies in the family Allieroididae. Intercropping with Lobularia maritima, commonly known as alyssum, effectively controls aphid and whitefly populations and other coal crops such as broccoli and collards by attracting surfids such as hoverflies, a natural aphid predator, and coccinellids such as ladybird beetles, a natural whitefly predator. Flea beetles in the Ultica genus target Chinese mustard and other crucifers. Botanical extracts of Zingerbur officinale, or ginger, at 25% weight by volume have been shown to reduce incidence of flea beetle damage in cold crops such as cabbage. Several cabbage worms, such as the imported cabbage worm Pieris rapi, the cabbage loopers Trichoplusia, and diamondback mothworm Flutella xylostella, can also pose a threat to the plant by attacking its leaves. Cabbage worm populations have been controlled with the biocide of Bovaria bassiana, an asexually reproducing form of Cordyceps fungi. The fungal hyphae targets the larvae without harming the plant. Chinese mustard can be susceptible to pathogens, particularly downy mildew caused by the Uomyce peronospora parasitica. Its infection results in a misshapen leaf with yellow blotches. Seed treatment and later foliar spray of Allium sativum bulb, or garlic, extracted at 1% weight by volume, has been found to reduce the severity and incidence of the most common pathogens, such as those represented here, which from left to right cause downy mildew, alternaria leaf blight, white rust, sclerotinia rot, and powdery mildew on Chinese mustard. Intercropped plants in the mustard family may be susceptible to these diseases as well. Further guidance on both pest and disease management, as well as chemical control recommendations, can be found in Chapter 10 of the Florida Vegetable Production Handbook. Chinese mustard grows fast, and recommended varieties such as Southern Giant Curled and Florida Broadleaf usually reach harvest maturity 45 to 50 days after planting. Because cloudy weather might decrease leaf vitamin C and mineral nutrients, it is recommended to harvest the plant quickly during periods of high light intensity. This crop can be harvested by either cutting the entire plant, as shown in the picture on the top right, or picking off the fully expanded leaves, as shown in the picture on the bottom right. For successive harvesting, cutting off only the plant crowns allows the plant to regrow for a second harvest. While harvesting, avoid unmarketable dead, yellowing, and overmatured leaves. Fresh mustard leaves can be stored in the refrigerator for three days when put in plastic bags. Plants may be stored up to five days if the leaves are wrapped in moist paper towels. Chinese mustard can stay fresh for 12 days if stored in vacuum bags at temperatures of 34 degrees Fahrenheit to 38 degrees Fahrenheit but the leaves will quickly decay if the temperature rises above 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Storage time does not appear to be affected by whether or not the crown is intact. Chinese mustard is good for the immune system due to high vitamin A and C concentrations. It's also rich in vitamin K and therefore good for bone health as well. It is beneficial for heart and eye health due to the presence of flavonoids, beta carotene, lutein, and zeaxanthin, Consumption may help protect against free radicals and oxidative-related stress. In addition, this plant contains glucosinolates, which are effective in the treatment of microbial infections and fighting against cancer. Along with its edible benefits, Chinese mustard can also be cultivated as an oil-yielding crop. Its seeds contain 30% to 45% oil and are a primary source for canola oil. Additionally, Chinese mustard has the potential to treat heavy metal pollution by phytoremediation. The Chinese mustard leaves can either be eaten raw, in salad mixes, stir-fried, or braised with ham, pork, or turkey. The leaves give a boost of fiber and flavor to all these dishes. 
They have a nutty crunch when fresh, and a peppery flavor when wilted and simmered. Chinese mustard has been cultivated across the United States. According to the University of Kentucky and the University of Arkansas Cooperative Extension Services, the estimated expenses for growing Chinese mustard would be between $3,000 to $3,500 per acre, which leaves an approximate $1,000 to $1,500 profit when the greens are sold at market price. With its quick growing time, it is possible to have multiple harvests in one cool season and further increase profitability. Current crucifer farmers can easily incorporate this new crop into their existing operation. Chapter 1, Commercial Vegetable Production in Florida, has helpful links to help make your operation cost-effective. Many U.S. consumers eat leafy greens in salads and sandwiches, and they are motivated to try other non-traditional leafy vegetables. Chinese mustard offers many advantages, such as a distinct peppery and nutty flavor often preferred by consumers, in addition to its nutritional value. Furthermore, there is an existing and growing demand for Asian vegetable crops in Florida, particularly those with use in traditional Chinese medicine, such as mustard greens. If supported by proper marketing, Chinese mustard could be a profitable new winter crop in Florida. For more information on cultivating the Chinese mustard plant, please check out any of the resources listed here, from which we have compiled this presentation. Thank you.